And you go, why are you doing this? You go, well, uh, you know, the machines only make blue ones. So to make red ones, we have to do this. And you go, well, what idiot would do that? Oh, I was the idiot who did that. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Neil Winteregg. I am joined with Dr. Greg Winteregg today. And today we are going to do a video. This is not one of our newsroom rants or, uh, you know, complaining about something else. This is an educational video. So stay tuned to the end, all right? Uh, <laughs> this is the role of a CEO. Uh, people ask us a lot, you know, what is this person in this business supposed to do? What is, the, what is the job of an executive? What is all this? And honestly, the role of the CEO really um, has a lot to do with how an organization is functions, mm -hmm. how it's structured, the culture of the organization. Um, but we wanna talk today about what we think a CEO should actually do um, and what types of decisions they should make. Well, and I want to also add, uh, most businesses, like 89% of businesses in the U.S. are small businesses. They have under 20 employees, uh, according to a study that we recently saw. But you have you and four employees like, well, I'm not a CEO. This isn't for me. Yeah. Oh, yes, you are. Yeah, I'm the guy laying the bricks. I'm not a CEO. Right, but it's your business. You started it. So by default, you are the chief executive officer. So you're the one in charge. Yep. So this is for any business owner. And Neil and I- And also, this is not just small businesses. If oh, more, yeah, that's right. More large more companies. More large companies, if the CEO just did these few things, yeah. would be in a completely different world. Yeah, for sure. And so I'm gonna take on a few points here today as a CEO, and Neil's gonna respond as someone who works in a company, mm -hmm. right? So for me, the number one product of the CEO has to be vision and future. Where is this company going? And I'm sure that you will back me up on this. If the people in the organization look at their fearless leader and they are lost, chasing their tail, panicked, not sure which direction to go, um, doesn't that freak you out if you're working in a company and the, the leadership seems a bit confused? Yeah, I, would, I leave. <laughs> so as someone working in an organization, don't you feel better and secure if you are informed about where the company is going? Absolutely. Long-term vision, this is what's happening. Don't you feel better knowing that you have a future? Yeah. But if you see the, the leader running around panicked, um, you know, hey, can't pay you this week, then aren't you kind of inclined to start passing your resume in, around and yeah, going there's on uncertainty. Monster. Yeah, there's, there's uncertainty, uncertainty there. You don't know what if you have a future, what's going to happen, et cetera. Right, so tip number one, have a vision. And if you're uncertain about it, then meet with your accountant or other business advisors. Never let your juniors, never let anybody under you know that you are uncertain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number one, vision confidence and certainty in the future. And if you have to, fake it until you figure it out, mm -hmm. all right? Number two, you have to have a strategy for achieving that vision. Not just a bunch of ideas and you're throwing a bunch of mud up against the wall to see what will stick. No. Like you have to have a strategy for achieving that. And then for you working in a company, you need to know when you come to work every day just what the heck you're doing. Yeah, you can't just say, uh, you know, Okay, guys, instead of making uh, red triangles, right. we're going to now start making blue triangles and then just walk away. Right. There has to be an idea behind why we're switching our product line, mm -hmm. how that's going to happen. Because a lot of people at first are going to be very used to making the certain products that they make or doing the certain job they do. And when you change it without an exact step-by-step -step sequence mm -hmm. and reasoning and why, yes. it creates that uncertainty again. Yes. Why are we doing this? I don't need to do this. This is stupid. Why do we do it this way? And then somebody says, well, this is why we do it this way. And they go, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Right. But it's having that strategy actually worked out of how to achieve that goal. So then as a CEO, yes, you have a vision and you have to have a strategic plan. And then the strategic plan has to be sold to these guys. Why are we doing this? Why are we making this change? What is behind this strategy? Why has this decision been made? Because if Neil, Neil's not a robot, and if he's out there just doing something, not sure why he's doing it, first of all, he's not gonna do it very well, not gonna do it very fast, 
and actually might start looking around for another job. Actually, I would disagree with you there. I would say most employees are robots <laughs> because they don't know that vision. They well, don't know that enough. strategy. They don't know why they're doing what they're doing. That's just well, that, that's actually a, a very good point. Yeah. <laughs> very good point. All right. So now you have to have a strategy and then you have to sell it to the people who have to execute it. Yes. So they have to know why they're doing it. All right. Now, then you have to have a way to monitor whether the strategy is actually being complied with. So we're switching from red triangles to blue triangles, and you have to go out and you have to look at what's coming off the production line. Are they red? Are they blue? Are they purple? You know, you're getting some mixed version of what you thought. So you have to follow up and make sure that your orders and your strategy is being complied with, as well as maybe having some statistical monitors. Yeah, like, statistics is definitely important to monitor. How much production work, how many units are rolling off the production line? How many billable hours do we have out of this accounting or this law firm? So you have to have some way as a CEO to be able to look and say, well, are we winning or are we losing with our new plan? Right. And then if you have a scoreboard, you know if you're winning or losing as, as, as an employee. As an employee. Yeah, right. sure. So now these are the three things that are on top of my mind. Yeah. Now as an employee, what else would you like to see? Yeah, and we talked off camera about this a little bit. I mean, you could obviously say that a CEO is in charge of five million other things. Yeah. But I want to I want to just look at like the simplicity of what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say a good example of this is actually the Ford versus Ferrari movie, mm -hmm. which uh, the CEO of Ford realizes, look at the way we're going. Yeah. We're not going the right way. Everybody's saying, no, look, look, we're doing this and we got this great car. And he's like, this is crap. We need to change up what we're doing. Right, we're losing. And, yeah, we're losing. <laughs> we need to make a new strategy. We need to have people understand that we're not just here making these big, big cars for no reason. We have a race pedigree. So we're gonna set out, we're gonna do this. And there's a strategy behind it. We're gonna hire the right people and all this stuff, mm -hmm. right? Th that's actually the, a perfect example. Yeah. And that's really what the CEO needs to do. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I would say, is from an employee perspective to anybody who is a leader of people, you have to be willing to listen to the people underneath you. Mm -hmm. Now, there's also a double-edged sword to that. Mm -hmm. um, if you know that the vision is right, that the strategy is right, and that this is how it can be accomplished, and you have detractors, they need to go. Right. But we talked earlier about like undercover boss. Yeah. You know, uh, the people go, okay, everybody's gonna make red triangles now. And uh, and then you find out that the way everybody's making red triangles is by taking the blue ones and painting them red. <laughs> and you go, why are you doing this? You go, well, uh, you know, the machines only make blue ones. So to make red ones, we have to do this. And you go, well, what idiot would do that? Oh, I was the idiot who did that. So you have to be willing to listen to the people that are underneath you to say, what do you need to do your job better? Yep. How could you, who do this more than I do, do your job better. Exactly. And make it better. And listen to the people underneath you and not just say, well, <laughs> you know, I don't care what it takes, you make the red triangles. Right. Okay, then you're gonna upset people. Because if you are a CEO in a business and you are detached from the production of the product or service, yeah. you have to grant some major importance to the people who are there on the front lines, boots on the ground, yes. doing it, watching the machine or the clients or the whatever. And you can't just be up there in your ivory tower, smoking cigars, looking down over your empire and so detached that you don't even know what's going and on. I think that that's what's interesting when you think back to older older times, before we had as much automation, before we had everything that we mm -hmm. had, there was a lot of times where you hear about, I think maybe in old car factories or you know, production facilities, the CEO, the owner, what had his office overlooking the production floor. Yeah. We definitely don't have that no. anymore. You exactly. know, Jeff Bezos' office is not in the warehouse. <laughs> you know, and rightfully so. He doesn't, you know, he, he right. can do whatever he wants to do. He's worth a gazillion, bazillion dollars. But we do have a more disconnection mm -hmm. than we ever had before. And I always say the more technologically advanced, the less in communication we are. Mm -hmm. And I think technology forces that into a lot of businesses where you aren't in communication right. with these people. And so this is where Neil wanted to throw in just from the employee viewpoint, listen to me, I do have some good ideas, don't brush me off. Well, I have, I have a friend uh, who I know who uh, five years ago, uh, I visited his office and he had 10 employees and he stood at his computer in the middle and there were 10 desks and the name of the company is No Before, K-N-O-W-B-E, and then the number four, No Before, go look it up. Uh, he's gone from 10 employees to 800 mm -hmm. in five years. 
uh, from zero value to a billion dollar valuation. And I know many people who work there, 800 employees, I know many of them. Every morning he's on the television from nine until 10 after. Every morning he, everybody, like broadcast through the whole everybody day. stops working. And his office is in the middle of the floor. And his right? office stands in the middle and he, he doesn't not, have a door. He doesn't have a door. He you can walk up and talk to him anytime. So he practices this better than anyone I have Probably. ever seen. And his company has exploded. He's got Wall Street money, et cetera. But I was so impressed because, you know, in my offices every morning, you know, we're like, hey, what are we achieving today? What are yeah. the goals for today, et cetera? And he still does that with 800 employees and a billion dollar company. I think another interesting thing just on that is um, the show The Profit with Marcus Lemonis. We've talked yeah. about Marcus a few times. I've noticed, I haven't watched as many episodes in the last few months, but I noticed at one point, it seemed like he was getting a couple of offices together for some of his smaller companies mm -hmm. to actually work out of in the same space, yeah. So that they were all connected to each other, even though you know they do completely different things. Right. They were networked. They can network and work and help with each other. Yep. And he, you know, he puts them there in that space so that they're all connected and yeah. he can be connected. And I think that that's just something that's very lost these days. I think right. that, that that operating basis is much. So this smarter. Circle, circles back around to communication. Communication, working with them. So these are the four main things. Obviously, there's a a hundred million others, but we think these are the top four from each If you nail these four, the rest of the other CEO everything else is going to take care come of itself. together much easier. Yeah. So we'll let you do the close. All right. Well, that's all I have for you today. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up, a like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment down below. Tell us any other really vital roles of a CEO that you think should be in there and we'll comment on them as well. We'll see you next time.